you're about to discover the four things you really need to know about Saga Cruises. I'm Gary Bembridge. This is another of my tips for travelers. I'm here on board Saga Cruises, Spirit of Discovery, in my cabin, and I want to share with you things that I think you really need to know about Saga, starting with this one. Saga Cruises is part of the Saga Holding Group, and they specialize in insurance and also regular travel, so escorted tours particularly. They have two ships in their fleet, very modern fleet. You have Spirit of Discovery, which I'm on now recording this, which was launched in 2019, and Spirit of Adventure, a sister ship, launched in 2020. It operates in the small ship category. They have 999 guests on these ships, 10 passenger decks, and it's all balcony cabins. Saga talks about offering boutique small ship cruising. And what they mean by that is the whole design and look and feel of the ship is quite contemporary and modern, inspired a lot by boutique hotels, particularly in London, and small ship because it falls within the small ship category in the industry by only having 999 guests. Secondly, one of the critical things that I always like to look at when reviewing a cruise line is what do they do unique or different to other cruise lines. And Sanka does a surprising large amount. In fact, there's seven things that I think they do differently. First of all, they are an adults only 50 plus cruise line. The second thing they do is they focus on a very British experience. So everything on the ship, whether it's the styling of food, the quizzes, the entertainment, the, the lectures, even the passengers, it's a very, very British experience. And in fact, if you want to come on a Saga cruise, the only way you can really book it is through UK agents or through UK Saga. Saga does offer probably one of the most British of all experiences that you can get cruising out of the UK. The other thing that Saga does, and they win a lot of awards for this, every year at Travel Awards, they win awards for it, which is their door-to-door -door VIP service. So they basically will come and collect you from where you live, bring you right down to the ship in Dover, and then when you finish, they will take you back to your home. So it's very much a door-to-door -door service, and the guests who come on Saga cruises love the fact that they get met at the door and brought all the way to the ship. The other thing which I think they cater for better than any other cruise line in the world is for solo travelers. 20% of the cabins on these new ships the Spirit of Discovery and the Spirit of Adventure are solo cabins. 109 cabins are solo cabins. So they cater enormously for solo travelers. And it does mean that you don't have then all the big surcharges for double occupancy. So definitely, I don't think there's any other cruise line that caters on this scale as a percentage of their ship for solo travelers. It's something I think they do incredibly well and they have lots of meetups and ways of looking after solo travelers once they're on board. The other thing which Saga do is they provide no-fly cruising out of the UK all year round. Most of the departures will be out of places like Dover. They do move to Southampton, particularly in the winter season. But unlike many cruise lines who move their ships out of the UK and head to places like the Caribbean, Saga will sail all year round out of the UK. That's one thing that I think does make them unique and different. The whole fleet is based in the UK all year round. Another really interesting aspect to what Saga does is they will bundle insurance into the fare. One of the big challenges when you go cruising is the cost of insurance and getting the, making sure that you've got the right policy. And also because Saga does attract some older passengers, particularly in their 60s, 70s and above, getting travel insurance and cruise insurance can be a challenge. So within their fare, you can opt in to have insurance to cover your cruise. I don't know of any other cruise line that includes it within their fare. So it's definitely something unique and it's a real big plus. Another thing that they do pretty uniquely certainly for the category of ships that they operate in, is their fares have a huge amount of inclusions compared to other cruise lines of a similar standard. So obviously your accommodations included, all your foods included, and that includes both the standard dining, so in the main restaurant, in the grill and the veranda, which are the informal dining, but also then in all of the speciality restaurants. So for example, on board the Spirit of Discovery, they have the Club by Jules Holland, which is the steakhouse. They have East to West, which is a real saga classic, which is kind of Asian fusion food. Then they have a seafood restaurant called Coast to Coast. On Spirit of Adventure, they're tweaking those slightly. You still have the steakhouse, you're gonna have a Nepalese, and you're also gonna have an Italian. So all of your dining is included, afternoon tea, room service is included. 
They used to include wine and beer at lunchtime, but all of your drinks are included in all of the fares from 2020. As I've already mentioned, you've got the transfer service and you've got the insurance. They also have a shuttle bus which runs into the towns if it's not within easy walking distance. That's included within the fare. That's kind of a complimentary shuttle service. Other cruise lines will often charge you for that. Other inclusions within the fare, they include Wi-Fi. Now, most cruise lines will charge you for Wi-Fi. Some of the very premium ones do. To be honest with you, I don't find the Wi-Fi particularly good on board the times that I've been on board Saga, but it is definitely included. Gratuities are included. And even if you go to the spa, I wasn't charged any gratuities when I went to the spa. So no gratuities on top of your fare, that's included. So the key extras that you're gonna pay for is laundry you're gonna pay for, although you can use the guest laundry for nothing. Obviously, if you do shopping, there's no casino on board. If you use something like the medical center and then excursions, they are extras. So the fares do include pretty much more than many other equivalent cruise lines. So thirdly, what do Saga do the same or worse than other cruise lines of a similar type, sort of premium end cruise lines? Well, first of all, they offer a very traditional cruising experience. So you're not gonna find it particularly innovative or different. So it's gonna have formal nights, for example, where you are expected to dress up. So gentlemen in tuxedo or dark suit and tie, ladies in sort of glamorous gowns. The activities and events on board are pretty traditional as well. So you're gonna have things like your quizzes, putting competitions, trivia quizzes. The production shows are very traditional style. So you're going to have your sort of review type shows. I think the shows, for example, are pretty standard to the rest of the industry. They're not particularly innovative and different. So they're good quality. Certainly the passengers enjoyed them a lot, but certainly I found them pretty standard to other cruise lines. So if you like production shows, which are of the review type, so for example, they had some on board which looked at dance and music through the decades. They did another one focusing on Queen. Those types of shows, pretty traditional. That's what you're gonna get on board. Other activities that they offer include dancing to live bands, which again is very consistent for a lot of particularly British-based cruise lines. They also have craft classes. They have a dedicated craft class. They have a library stocked with lots of books. So it is pretty similar from many of the other cruise lines of its type in terms of the style and type of cruising experience. It's not a particularly different cruise experience. So if you like traditional cruising, you certainly will like the Saga experience. The facilities on board the ship are again pretty traditional for a cruise ship. So you can find the usual things, spa, fitness center, pool, a selection of bars and lounges. Although in fact, one of the lounges, which, which I think is kind of different, very special is the Britannia lounge. But overall, the facilities are pretty standard for other cruise ships of its type. The other thing which I think is pretty similar is food. The food on board is great, but of course all premium lines tend to have really good food. There's lots of choice, big menus, good quality food, but I would say it's pretty consistent with other cruise lines of that type. So if you're paying a sort of a premium cruise fare, you expect good food and you will find it on Saga. And they certainly have the choice because they have different specialty restaurants. But I'd say overall the food certainly matches and is good as other premium lines. Like other premium cruise ships or many cruise ships, there's a wide range of accommodation, but what's very important is they're all balconies. So it's also a plus, but you can get everything from suites down to solo balcony cabins. So there's a wide range of cabin types like there are on other cruise ships. The thing which they also probably do a little bit worse than other cruise lines is making it easy for international guests to come on board. They're very focused on the British cruiser. And it's very easy if you live in the UK to book a Saga cruise. If you're coming from another country, so you're Australian or from the US, it's a little more difficult because they don't actually sell those actively in those other countries. So you need to work with an agent which can connect with Saga in the UK. They can make all the arrangements, they can do flights and do all the arrangements to get you into the UK, but it, they don't make it that easy. So you do have to deal with Saga or an agent in the UK that deals with Saga. So that's one thing they probably make it a little bit more difficult because if you want to cruise normally on other cruise lines, you'll find it very easy to make bookings online directly with a local site. So who is Saga best for? Well, as I mentioned, you need to be an adult, you need to be over 50, or at least one of the people in the party needs to be over 50 to come on a Saga cruise. So it's adult only, no kids, and you do tend to find the profile is on the higher side 
And of course, it depends a little bit on the cruise and the length of the cruise and the time of the year. So you will find a lot of people in their 60s, 70s, and even in their 80s on board a Saga cruise. Also, you need to be someone who loves a very British experience and likes traveling with lots of British travelers. It's going to be pretty much all British cruises on board and the experience, as I've already discussed, is gonna be very British from the food, the entertainment. So if you're really craving and looking for a great British experience, you'll find it on board. It's very good if you're a solo traveler, as I've mentioned. They also do have cabins for people with accessibility needs and are very good at dealing with people who have accessibility needs on the ship and also when it comes to arranging excursions. So those types of travelers will find Saga a good option in my view. Saga is a very interesting line. It's a small line, it's a very British focused line and it has really big, strong, loyal following. Hopefully that's given you some insight. If you'd like many more tips around cruising, why don't you watch one of my other videos? I have many, many videos all about cruising. So watch one of them right now.